Hey folks, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Windows Server video tutorial. Now, as the title tells you, this is Windows Server and uh, we're going to be creating today a security group and I'm going to be telling you why you want to create security groups and how much easier it makes it to uh, manage your overall environment. Now, we are using the Windows Server 2016, uh, still using Technical Preview 5 here. And this will work, though, in Windows Server 2008 R2 or Windows Server 2012 just as well. Now, to get to the security, to, to add a security group, the first thing we're going to do is go to, uh, now, this is, again, on uh, Server 2016, but we're going to go to All Apps. And we are going to scroll down here to Active Directory Users and Computers. Now, it's the same Active Directory Users and Computers is the same in uh, 2008 R2 or 2012. Uh, you'll do this the same way. So what we're going to do here is look for our domain that we're working with. Here's home.org. We'll pull this down. And for manageability, I, I think this is the big thing that people get lost in. They start creating stuff in here. Uh, like you could right-click on uh, the, the top directory here, your domain, Go to New, and we can go in here and create a group. All right, very, very simple to do. We can do that. But for uh, manageability, you want to have this stuff uh, more in organizational units or OUs, so that way it's easier to find what you're looking for because over time, your domain is going to really, really grow. And as it grows, it gets you know really, really cumbersome to try to come in here and find your users, um, and we'll talk about that in another video, but a lot of people go into users and they just put all their users in here and it just becomes an absolute mess to try to get in there. And uh, you can find things obviously by searching and uh, we can search for things, but it's just so nice to have a nice clean active directory. So let's go to the domain and we're going to right click on it. Now we're going to create new and we're going to go here first to organizational unit. All right. So the organizational unit, you know, is a container that holds uh, different information. Um, you can almost think of this as just basic folder directories, file directories, uh, but it's going to allow us to really keep this Active Directory uh, domain and uh, Active Directory users and computers really clean and organized. So that's why it's called an organizational unit. Now in here, we're gonna call this security. So we'll call this security. I'm gonna unprotect it. And you can leave it protected. Protected container uh, protects it from accidental deletion. But if you're playing around with your environment and you're trying to come up with new things um, or, or new ways of doing things, unless you're absolutely sure you turn that on because it's really, really, they make it really difficult to delete things once this is checked. So uncheck that and we'll click OK. So now you see we have an actor directory uh, unit or, or organizational unit called security. Now in here, we're gonna enter all of our security groups. Over time, depending on how large your organizational is and uh, how many people you have, how many departments you have, um, how many subsets of uh, permissions you have to different folders and characteristics, this security folder can become very, very full. So you know, try to manage it to the point where you are working with a select group of people. So we're in security. We're gonna right click over here in the uh, name, type, and description. We're good on new. And this time we're gonna create, uh, we're gonna create a group, okay? So we're gonna create a group here. And the group name is based on pretty much whatever standard you want. I mean, there's no real, there's no real uh, set way that you can create a group name. So the group names is based on, I usually do it by department. Um, you can do it by a group of people. Uh, you can do it by a, uh, you know, a group of individuals, individual people. Um, there, there's just so many ways to do this. But the reason we're creating security groups, it's going to be so much easier for us to give permissions uh, to a group of people and not have to give them individual permissions. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So the security group, we're going to call this, let's say finance. Or if you want to go one step further, you can call it finance department. 
Okay. So finance department, what that's allowing us to do, what that's telling us is anybody in the finance department, we can put into this group and then anywhere we give permissions to this group, that select group of people will have permissions. So what's that going to save you? Well, quite honestly, what it's going to save you is a ton of time. And the reason it's going to save you a ton of time is because let's say we create a file share and in that file share, we want to give everybody in the finance department permissions to a file share. Well, and I'll show you that. Let me show you that in a second here. But you would have to give in each individual person permissions. Instead of doing that, let's make it a lot easier to do this. So finance department. Now, scoop, group scope. Okay, the group scope. Now, domain level. All right, let me explain these to you a little bit. So domain uh, local, I'm sorry, domain local is accounts from any domain, uh, global accounts from any domain, universal groups from any domain, or domain local groups, but only from the same domain as the parent domain local group. And uh, when you're assigning permissions, it's, it's member permissions can be assigned only within the same domain as the parent domain local group. All right. That's a lot to sink in. Global is universally what I use. Now, what global means is accounts from the same domain as the parent global group. Global groups from the same domain as the parent as the parent global group. Member permissions can be assigned in any domain. So that way, if you create this and you create more domains and you're, you're joining your domains in your uh, organization or forests or whatever you want to call them these days, that global can be used and spanned across all those different domains once they're uh, joined and, and together. Now, we're also talking about universal. Universal is accounts from any domain within a forest in which this universal group resides. Um, global groups from any domain within the force in which this universal group resides or universal groups from any domain within the force in which this universal group resides. And it can be assigned permissions to any domain or forest. So there's a lot to take in there and a lot to think about. So let's click. Uh, well, wait, one more thing here we got to look at group type. Group type is security, not distribution. Okay, we are using security. We're creating a security group. Play it okay. So here is our security group. At the very top, you see finance department, security group, global. Now let's go ahead and we're going to create, uh, just for, uh, for the sake of this, we're going to create uh, two users. But what we're going to do here first, again, in organizational skills, the skill sets that we need to maintain, we're going to create new, um, we're going to create a new, organizational unit so let's see here new and we're looking for OU I don't see it in there well because that is an OU so we're not going to create an OU inside of an OU so we are going to create another organizational unit under here under the home group and we'll go organizational unit all right and we'll call it, we'll just simply call this finance finance users okay and the reason we want to do this again is just to really keep it cleaned up here f-i-n-a-n-c yeah finance finance users okay so we're going to create two users in here and the only reason i want to do is two is because then i can show you how easy this makes it so our first user is um bob newhart Yeah, that'll work. Last name is Newhart, Bob Newhart. His login will be B Newhart. And we'll click next. Uh, we'll give Bob a password, default password. Um, this might not like this. Default password of password. Uh, domain kind of a password, a password. Okay, kind of figured that. It really doesn't matter what I make it right now. Because, you know, we're this is for demonstration purposes. All right, so Bob Newhart. And then we're going to create another new user. 
And we'll just grab another new user here. And this will be uh, Lisa uh, Benny. Benny. B-E-N-N-I-N-G. Benning. Okay. L. Benning. Such as that. And we're going to create a default password. Yeah, sometimes you type a little fast here. All right. And we're just going to say okay and finish. All right. So here's our two users. Now, what we want to do with these users is we want to add those into our security group. There's two ways you can do it. One is you can right click on it, go to properties, go to members, add. And if we type in Bob, check name, you'll see here where it says Bob Newhart. And then we can add our next user, Lisa. Or if you wish, you can go back to the users when you're adding your users. Let's look at Bob here. And you can see now where Bob is a member of that finance department group, security group that we created under security. So as you're adding your users, you can always go in here, go to member of, add. If you know the uh, security group, finance department, you can add it right here, finance department. So there's two easy ways you can add your security, your groups or make them members of. And if we go in here now and look, sure enough, we now have our two users, Bob Newhart, Lisa Benning. So why is that critically important to set up security groups? Because like I said, if you work in a big organization, uh, many, many people, um, you know, I came from the uh, education side. We had students, we had teachers, we had faculty, we had staff, we had administrators. Um, and there's many, many, many people to deal with. So if I wanted to give all of the teachers permissions to a certain folder, let's say. All right, we'll leave this up. Let's bring up our directory here. So let's just say, for instance... So what we're going to do now is we are going to create a um, new folder and uh, we'll create in here uh, something called home drives or H drives. Okay, and that stands for home drives. And what we're going to create in here, no, back that up a minute. Let's delete that. Let's take that out of there. We're going to create a folder in here um, called finance. So we created a folder in here called finance. Now in that folder, we want to give those that finance group permissions to this folder. So if we right click on it and we go down to share with specific people, let's see if we can say finance. So we're going to share with a particular group of people. There's our group, finance department. Click OK. And now everybody in there has read permission. If we want them to have rewrite permission, we just change that to read write. Click on share. And click on done. Instead of the other way you'd have to do this is if you go in here and go into um, share with specific people, you would have to add each person such as Bob. You would add Bob. Uh, you'd find Bob. Okay, so check names. You would add Bob, and then you would add Lisa, and then you would add Carol and Joe and Jimmy and whoever. But if we have them all in our security group, we can just do that, give that group read-write permissions or read permissions, and we're good to go. So that is why it's so critically important. Yeah, let me open this back up here. That's why it is so critically important to set up uh, security groups uh, for that. We've also found over time, uh, you may want to give a group, uh, you know, certain domain privilege access uh, to something. Um, like if you have a group of, um, of techs out there, you know, we always want to have this group here. You know, we want to create a, uh, another group. And uh, this group would be uh, techs something like that. Maybe you have support uh, people on your staff 
and you want to give them local domain domain access to be able to get on the computers. And just as you hire people, you might want to just put them in there and make it just so much easier to give that group uh, certain domain level access and, and whatever you need to do. So, so hopefully, folks, this uh, really helped you out and we got you moving along here with creating security groups. And uh, as the title said, like I said, this is server 2016. It just happens to be the virtual machine I have loaded up here. And uh, this will work on server 2008 R2 as well as server 2012. So we, you know, that's why the title just said, um, um, we're going to call this Ashley Play Windows Server uh, Creating Security Groups. Um, so, and I think this uh, would be uh, very helpful for you to get your uh, OUs and get your uh, Active Directory cleaned up and organized. Folks, don't forget, if you want to learn Windows Server 2008 R2 or Windows Server 2012 R2, please check out my online classes. If you uh, go to classroom.jackstechcorner.com, you'll find the classes there. And I'll have a link uh, for the courses below in the description so you can find the uh, courses very easily. They are uh, very inexpensive to take. Uh, many, many companies will reimburse you for taking those. Once you complete the course, I will email you your certificate to you uh, of completing the course, and it will help you get started from install to administration. Again, don't forget to check out those online courses at uh, classroom.jackstechcorner.com. Folks, thank you so much for watching, and I will be bringing you more server tips and tricks along the way, and I will talk to you next time. Take care from Jack's Tech Corner. Bye from now.